The Compute Module 4 ecosystem is hitting a fever pitch, and it's actually possible to find these things in stock now. That's really cool because there's so many new projects coming out. I know a couple weeks ago I talked about the Mirko PC, which was the first board that allowed me to boot a Raspberry Pi off an NVMe SSD, and that's awesome for so many reasons, especially for performance. I also talked about the Tofu before, and there's some other boards too. I also made a 2.5 gigabit NAS for the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, and it wasn't very pretty. There's a new NAS that I'll show you in a little bit that looks beautiful, and it was built by somebody who's never even designed a PCB before. I'm gonna to get to that later, but first let's look at a couple boards that are in the prototype stage on Crowd Supply. So first we have the Pionor, which is on Crowd Supply, and there's a Pro model for $39 with a camera connector and an M.2 slot underneath, or a light model without those two things on the bottom side. And it has one really cool trick. It has a quick or Stemma QT connector that you can plug in and daisy chain I squared C sensors, either from Adafruit or SparkFun or anyone else that makes a compatible sensor. And it lets you put tons of different sensors on the board without much work, just connecting them together, daisy chaining them without having to do soldering or breadboarding. Another fun trick it has is an ADC with up to eight analog inputs. It also has two programmable buttons and a programmable RGB LED on top. And to top all that off, it's in the Arduino Uno form factor, so it makes breadboarding a lot easier with a Raspberry Pi. So you can go on Crowd Supply if you want to support the Pionora and get one for yourself. It looks like it's already almost 100% funded, but there's a few days left if you want to fund it and get one as soon as possible. Next up is the Seaberry Pi CM4 carrier board from Alftel, the company that also made this, which is a 12-slot carrier board that I tested on a Raspberry Pi to test things like Wi-Fi cards, Google Coral TPUs, and tons of NVMe SSDs. I even built the world's smallest NVMe RAID array on this board. This board is really cool because it's a mini ITX motherboard that you can put the Raspberry Pi in and you can put it into any standard ITX case and you can have a Raspberry Pi in a desktop case that has all the same features as admittedly a, a little bit of a low-end computer. Uh, it has a lot of different features. For example, there's an M.2 M key slot for an NVMe SSD. There's four mini PCI Express slots. There's four M.2 E key slots. There's one by 16 PCI Express slot in the normal ITX location, so you could use it in a standard ITX case with any kind of PCI Express card. There's one by one PCI Express slot on the side of the board, so you could mount a riser and have another board inside. And there's all the standard Raspberry Pi ports and I.O. connectors, plus there's a SATA power header, redundant 12-volt power connectors, an RTC, a fan PWM controller, and even support for PoE++ or 803.2BT, which allows for 100 watts of power to supply the board and any cards you plug into it, meaning you could power the entire board, including a graphics card, straight through a network cable. Check out the Seaberry on Crowd Supply and see all the details and the features that I didn't talk about, and I really hope this one gets built because I would love to have a Raspberry Pi motherboard inside of a tiny PC case that I could use for all my testing. It would just save a lot of time and a lot of work using all the different adapters I use for all my testing. So I mentioned the Mirko PC earlier and how it was the first CM4 board that I used to boot a Raspberry Pi off NVMe SSDs. The Tofu has a slot underneath, but that slot doesn't fit standard size 2280 NVMe SSDs. So Tofu actually is making a key M adapter that lets you put full-size SSDs on the bottom of the Tofu. That's pretty awesome. They also have an official case for it now, so instead of my little 3D printed case, which is available for free on Thingiverse, uh, you can actually buy a case from them that's pre-made and looks great. The thing I really want to talk about though in this video is this CM4 NAS by MebsT on Reddit. I found out about this post when I was browsing Reddit one day and I saw this thing and it was just a PCB, but I saw a lot of potential here and I was like, well, you know, he made the PCB, that's pretty awesome, let's see what actually happens. Uh, I also noticed he had a really cool design for a NAS enclosure that had four 3.5-inch drive bays. 
He also put all of his work in an open source GitHub repository so other people could replicate it if they want. I was like, I am all in for this. So he actually finished this project and he put up another post with the finished build and it looks beautiful. I, I, if, you, if you didn't tell people, a lot of people would probably think that this thing was actually a manufactured product or something for sale. It just looks so great. It has an OLED screen that lets you see stats about the NAS. And the coolest thing about this is Mebs T, the user who posted this thing, he has never designed a PCB in his life, and he built a custom PCB. He soldered all the components on. He used hot air reflow and things like that that are just things that you, you would think are out of reach for most people, but he really hopes that this project inspires other people to kind of go out of their comfort zone and try things because he said it wasn't as hard as he thought it would be. This is such a cool project and has so many little features crammed into such a small and really good looking enclosure. And so I wanted to share it and, and go through a little bit more in detail. So just look at this thing. He designed it, like I said, all by himself, but he based it on the IO board design that the Raspberry Pi Foundation shared and let people modify and adapt, which is really awesome. I'm glad that they did that to allow people to get into the compute module four so quickly and easily. It has ethernet, PCI Express, HDMI, USB, I squared C, some GPIOs and a PWM fan controller so that he can keep the entire enclosure really cool. He also plugged in a four port SATA card, a PCI Express SATA card. He's using three drives currently. He has a four terabyte NTFS backup drive and two six terabyte WD Red Plus NAS drives in RAID 1. The fourth bay is empty right now, but he might actually put in a, a little UPS built into it using 12 650 batteries. And he measured the power consumption. It uses about 24 watts with the fan at 100% and all the drives doing writes and it uses about 36 watts maximum when all the drives are spinning up together, and it only uses about 6 watts at idle, so very energy efficient, much more so than the one that I built that had the 2.5 gig network card. Uh, his board design is up on GitHub, and the case design is on Thingiverse, so if you wanted to replicate this thing, you can do that, which is really awesome. One thing that was a little bit difficult, Meb said, was the power management, and I can sympathize that whenever I'm dealing with power, I'm always a little bit scared that I'm going to blow something up or fry it, and I actually have done that before a few times that you've seen. But he decided to use pre-built daughter boards to simplify his own PCB design, and he said that that's one of the few things that he thinks he'd improve if he ever made this into a model that, that other people could buy uh, through Kickstarter or CrowdSupply or something like that. And there's also a few things that are kind of missing, like a micro SD card slot so you can't use a light compute module. Um, and it'd be nice if all the ports on the board were on one side instead of having them kind of everywhere. Overall, what this shows me is that even somebody who's a beginner at this stuff can go from that to having a working device so quickly for so many different reasons. He has a zip file that you can download. You could upload that to JLC PCB and make a batch set of five boards and build this thing yourself if you wanted to. He also looked into making a pick and place model so that you could just send that over to JLC PCB and have the board made for you and, and shipped to you. Uh, but he hasn't had time for that. And if somebody wants to work on that, you know, be my guest, be his guest, I guess. Um, but it's really cool that, that all of this is available open source. And I, I really love seeing projects like this that not only demonstrate that anybody with the time and, and effort can do this, but also it's an open source spirit where this board is out and someone else could remix it and do something different or make it better or change it and use some different interface. Uh, a lot of really cool different things that you can do with it. Some people have asked about a Kickstarter or crowd supply campaign or something like that, but it's, it's really hard to do hardware design and build and prototype and, and sales and things like that. So uh, for now, it's probably a better idea to look for something like the Wire Trusty SATA NAS board. And again, be sure to subscribe because I'm soon going to be reviewing this tiny router and this even tinier router in addition to some other boards like the Wire Trusty SATA. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.